Right now, the right United, now, States, United government States government is preparing, preparing a step that, that military, military analysts, analysts say is the equivalent of defunding the police. the police. And they say that they say just that like just violent like crime is rising, where those where areas those have, areas have awakened, awakened an agenda to defund, to defund the, police, the police, so too so will terrorism rise, rise when America is no longer able to act as a threat mitigator around the world. The Army is the cutting 3,000 troops, 10% of its special operations ranks, and these include the trigger pullers. These trigger pullers are inside the Green Beret Commando units, which have conducted some of the country's most sensitive and most dangerous missions around our world. They've worked in the jungles of Vietnam. They've worked in the alleys of Baghdad. This reduction, this reduction, according to the politicians who are pushing for it, will enable the Army to rebalance toward large conventional ground forces that will be necessary in a fight against China. Opponents of the cunt, most notably senior special operations officers and those in similar ranks, are arguing that these cuts will hinder training of U.S. partners, including the very Taiwanese military that will be needed to fight against China in the coming war. They will, they say, limit the elite unit's ability to respond to crisis events around the world. They are going to be cutting special operations troops in supporting roles, such as psychological warfare. Now, I want you to remember that simultaneously, as the United States government denies the engagement of psychological warfare, denies the preparedness steps that they're taking to fight against China, here we have open source intelligence being delivered to the people through mainstream media outlets saying that these very things are happening. So they say they're going to cut roles such as psychological warfare, which if you don't know or aren't familiar with it, that's the misinformation and disinformation that they use around the world, including the very disinformation that you're privy to or witness in American Western television. The cuts will include civilian affairs, intelligence gathering and dissemination operations, communications to troops and logistics. It will include the cuts to enablers. These enablers are the ones who go into other countries and basically enable rogue units to operate in those nations. U.S. military officials say that these cuts will follow the reallocation of more than 700 special operations troops from the Army and other services. The cuts to the Pentagon's umbrella Special Operations Command will amount to 3,700 troops starting last year. Today, they say these operations units are uh, being spread or moving around Europe. They help train Ukrainian forces to fight Russia. They help train Taiwanese militaries to fight against China in East Asia. They're training allies to defend against possible aggression in Western-aligned countries, including West Africa. As the U.S. focuses on this great power competition with China, policymakers say that they favor pouring more money into the kind of conventional forces that are going to be needed in a fight against a nuclear-powered nation, China. The Army is in a moment of transformation, says the Army Secretary, Christine Wormuth. She told reporters at the Pentagon that there is new capabilities, or there are new capabilities, that we need to bring into the forefront. It's why the Ukrainian army has been so lethal against the Russians. They say it's undeniable why they should be cutting this. Now, we have right here a, an attempt by people inside of the military saying that there's something bigger going on here. And if you want to talk about conspiracy theories or if you want to talk about just looking at the facts of what we are seeing, an agenda to defund the police causes an increase in crime. Is there corruption in the police? Absolutely. freaking lootly Is there a bloat in the military? Absolutely. freaking lootly But what we do see is that predators or people looking for opportunity take advantage of these types of events. And so you defund the police and the predators who would have otherwise been a little bit uh, guarded or scared of getting caught and going to jail. Well, now they act. The terrorists or the uh, nation-aligned terror groups, that is Russia funding terrorism, China funding terrorism, the people who would have been too afraid to act because they would bring heat from the U.S. military down on their group or organization, they will begin to act when they see this happen. 
And so we see reports from these individuals inside the military trying to speak out. Here's another quote. Anyone can squeeze a trigger, but in order to hit something, you have to be trained. It is this specialized training with equipment and relationships in partner forces that create dilemmas necessary to defer, deter, or defeat adversaries like China. That's politicians right there saying how bad this is going to be. Russian media Russian is media reporting is that the country's that the president, president, Vladimir Putin, Putin, is putting out a red, out a red warning, warning to Western, Western nations, nations, saying that saying it is that now seen that Russia was, is, is, and forever, and forever will, be will be one of the foundations, foundations of the new of the world, world system, system. Ready, for ready for constructive interaction, interaction with everyone, with everyone who, strives who strives for peace, for peace and, and prosperity. And prosperity. The U.S. President Joe President Biden, Biden says, says that we now have now the highest, the highest share, share of Americans in the workforce in 20 years. They, bl- they, they say, these say these things like it's, like great. it's great. We have more, we have people, more people than people ever than working. Ever working. But, what but what they're not telling you is we have more, more people, people than ever working, working two jobs, jobs because one job one won't job cut, won't it, cut anymore. it anymore. Because politicians, because politicians like, Joe like Joe Biden, like, like every politician on each side of the political spectrum, they move for inflation. They want inflation. They want to make more money. They have stocks in the companies that are making money hand over over fist right now. right now. So why do you so think we have more people than ever working in the workforce? It's because people, it's because need, people two need two jobs. jobs. Biden, says Biden says that since that he has since taken, he has taken office, office, we've created 14 million new jobs. That's 14 million people working extra work. They didn't have to just a couple of years ago, but now they do. Reporting agencies agencies that are not aligned aligned with America America are saying that scientists scientists that are charged with ensuring the aging aging stockpile stockpile of U.S. nuclear weapons are ready to start start shipping shipping key components components over to Nevada's Nevada's desert. desert. They're doing this to prepare for underground underground testing testing that they call the dragon's tail. Experts at the National National Defense Defense Laboratories Laboratories haven't been able to physically validate validate how effective or useful or reliable our nuclear (laughs) weapons are since the year 1992. The Energy Department officials announced on Thursday that they are on the verge of putting together the technology necessary to do this. According to the information that we can find, the Scorpius project will study the conditions in the final stages of a nuclear weapon implosion, but without exposing a nuclear weapon explosion. John Custer, the Sandia project lead in Albuquerque, New Mexico, says that scientists call this the dragon's tail. He says, because because the experiment experiment approaches approaches, but stays stays just below the final final stage of fission of nuclear nuclear materials materials, as it sustains sustains an ongoing ongoing series of chain chain reactions, reactions, we will be able to finally finally make sure that our weapons weapons can work. work. During the Cold War, these questions were answered by setting off nuclear explosions. In the 1950s and 60s, the explosions sent different clouds into the sky above the New Mexico and Nevada deserts. The testing was limited later to underground explosions. The experimental machine that they are working on now is the length of a football field. It's going to sit 1,000 feet below the ground at the Nevada National Security Site. And they say it's clear that we need to know if our stockpile of nuclear weapons will work when they are required. If you had a car that was sitting in your garage for 30 to 50 years, one day you insert the key in the ignition, how confident would you be that it would start? That's how old our nuclear deterrent is. It's been more than 30 years since we conducted an underground nuclear explosive test. And they say that right now the injectors are being assembled at the facility, and this linear induction accelerator will generate a high energy electron beam. This will collide with a metal target that will generate X rays able to penetrate these uh, objects. Plutonium is compressed with high explosives, and a detector will convert the X rays into images that will be recorded by cameras. These cameras will capture images at speeds of 1 billion frames per second. They say that these facility tests and explosive behaviors will show us whether or not we have a nuclear deterrent. Now, that's not just us. In related news, Russia is warning that the country's parliament is set to revoke a ratification of a treaty that bans nuclear tests. 
In a speech at the Forum of Foreign Policy Experts, Putin announced that the Russian government has effectively completed the development of a new cruise missile system, as well as, you know, the Satan or Sarmat heavy intercontinental ballistic missile system. He says, we conducted the last successful test of a nuclear-powered global-range cruise missile. His statement statement was the first announcement of a successful test test of a new system, the Storm Storm Petrel. Petrel. In its first first mention mention since 2018, 2018, little little remains remains known about it, but it's codenamed Skyfall Skyfall by NATO. NATO. Western Western officials and experts experts say that they are uh, skeptical about its ability, but what we see is that the nuclear engine will keep it in the air, able to carry a nuclear warhead or a conventional one, staying aloft for a long period of time, and then delivering these weapons at a distance. When Putin first revealed that Russia was working on the weapon in 2018, in his State of the Nation address, he claimed it would have an unlimited range. It would circle the globe, undetected by missile defense systems. It did suffer an explosion in 2019, killing five nuclear engineers and resulting in a brief, they say, radioactive spike in a uh, region nearby. Russian officials never identified the weapon involved, but the U.S. says that it was this storm petrol. In a speech, Putin notes that the states are now going to begin ratifying a 1996 nuclear test ban. In short, what you see here is each one of these countries getting ready for nuclear war. They want to make sure that their bullets work. They want to make sure that their weapons work. They want to make sure that their people will do what they are told to do. The only difference between Russia and the United States is Russia is building nuclear fallout shelters so that some of their people can survive. And the United States of America has uh, continuity of government plans so that their government officials, politicians, and the richest and wealthiest among us can survive. Why do we see see such a diversity diversity between between what is being done done for other other countries countries and what is being being done done for us? What we know is without a shadow of a doubt, we are entering into an era of extreme depression, extreme violence, and chaos that will run wild through the streets. What we don't know is how the U.S. government government will will handle handle the chaos chaos in the streets of the country. country. Will we see martial law? law? Will we see see lockdowns? lockdowns? Will we see people people losing their ability ability to contain themselves? themselves? In a nation that has so many self-defense weapons, we have to question what the future will look like. And that's what we do here. We look at the facts and we question. By answering answering those questions, questions, or at least the possible possible routes that those paths will take, take, we are better better prepared prepared as a group. group. Thank you guys for being here with us. Please share this video with with friends and family who might want to know the truth truth about what's happening out there. there. From my family to yours, please stay safe and keep watch. This week's Full Spectrum News is brought to us by each one of you, by all of our members on Patreon. Make sure that you check out contingencymedical.com. Use the code FSS10 for real antibiotics from real doctors. They're delivered to your house. NutrientSurvival.com forward slash FSS has meals that are ready to eat, brain boosting or mental health boosting foods. They also have other long-term, long shelf life foods that are ready for you. The code FSS15 gives you a discount there. Please, everybody, everybody, stay stay safe and keep watch.